Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Phil and this is 3D Japan again. And uh, you saw in, in my last video, I took a look at the Ender 3 V3 KE from Creality. And some people were asking me how well it does with printing TPU. So I didn't have any TPU. <laughs> so I reached out to uh, my friend at uh, Creality and they sent out some TPU. <laughs> and uh, I also got a spool from Polymaker. So uh, I'm gonna model something and we're gonna take a look at that and then uh, we'll print some of these and see what it looks like. Okay, so here's what I've been working on to print. Uh, I've got just a little teddy bear here and uh, it is not one of my best models, <laughs> but it should be fun for uh, this purpose. Um, so uh, he needs a couple of more things. He doesn't have any ears yet, and he needs a tail. So uh, let's uh, start working on him. The one thing that I love about Lightwave is uh, some simple things, like if I have, th I have these four viewports, and if I want to make one of them full screen, I can just hit zero. And there we go. Or this one. And it's just whichever one my mouse is pointing over. And the other thing that's really cool is that if, if I'm working in polygons, uh, right now I'm working in subdivisional surfaces or sub Ds. If I want to work in polygons, I can just hit tab. And there we go. We've got polygons. And it's just so easy to just toggle back and forth. Uh, but so anyway, let's uh, give him some ears. I'm going to switch uh, switch this over to polygon selection mode. And uh, we'll maybe try selecting a couple of these. And let's turn on symmetry so we get both sides. I'll hit shift Y for that. There we go. And I'm going to hit E to extend it. And let's look over in the side here, or the front. And I'll hit T for move. And I'll go out a little bit. And then hit E again. And just keep going out. And okay, so I'm thinking I'll hit H to stretch this and stretch it in. Now I'm going to switch to. Uh, edge selection and we'll just use the right mouse button to drag around there and H to stretch that out okay so that's a general shape oops deselect so use a mouse wheel to zoom in a little bit and deselect that and we'll switch to point mode I can just grab these and just kind of move them around try to get some kind of rounded shapes and I have a button on my mouse set to uh, deselect so that is very convenient Okay, that looks pretty good. And so now what I'm going to do is select this point in the front there, and then come around and select the same one on the back. And from the side view, I'll just hit T for move, and I'll hold Control to constrain it to left and right, and just drag that way. And look at it and see how it looks. Okay, I'm going to go a little bit further. And I'll deselect the back one. And just want to make the front one go in a little bit more. I think that works. Yeah, so we got some cute little ears on there. <laughs> Let's do the same thing to make the tail. Okay. Zoom in there. Now, select the polygons. Uh, th those two should be alright, I think. 
Or maybe we'll even do this these as well. You see I made the bottom of him flat so that when I print him he'll sit flat on the build plate and then uh, when he's fully done he can sit flat on your table. Okay, just hit E and T for move. Just pull it out a bit. And then E again. Pull that out a bit. And we can tweak it. Because that's a rather straight <laughs> looking tail. So, I'm going to select all these around here. And I think I'll just, uh, maybe from the top view here, we'll hit H to stretch it out. And I'm going to see, I'm going to set my point, my beginning point there for as origin so that it'll automatically stretch from the middle. You know, no matter where my mouse is. That's better. So his tail's a little wider. And go to edge mode and select one of those and I have the L key set to select loop. So we'll select the whole loop and H to stretch. Select these. And now, yeah, just those four. <laughs> Let's undo and go back to mouse selection mode so it'll work from where the mouse is. Okay. T, move it in a little bit. I'm trying to make it look less uh, square. So, what I'm thinking now is we'll deselect that. I'm going to hit Control T, zoom in a little bit. Now I can just drag these individual points. Yeah. And I would round it out a little bit more. That's better. Okay, bring this in a little bit. Yeah, okay, he's got a cute little tail now. And so that's it, he's ready to print, pretty much. Uh, so like I said, you can use the tab key to go back and forth at polygons, but you know, that's what printing needs, but this is going to look terrible. So what I can do is hit Control D and it'll freeze that sub D into polygons pretty much the way it looked. So I'll switch this to just texture mode. And again, this you can still, it's better, but you can still see the polygons. So let's undo. I'm going to go into my display options or uh, regular options. Oops onto my regular options and I'm going to increase my sub patch divisions I'm, I'm just going to double them for now so that's six and now if I hit control D now it's much smoother and this will print much nicer so when I'm done I can just come up here to I have a glare on my screen so it's hard to see come up to save and export and export STL and then we'll bring this over here so I can see it <laughs> and uh, so I'm gonna set this to binary and we'll set the up axis for Z because that's what it is for printing in light wave it's Y and I'm going to set my export units to millimeters. And then just click OK. And then we'll just name our file and save it. Call him Teddy Bear. 
Okay, now I'm going to print them out and we'll see how the results of this TPU come out. And by the way, if you didn't know, I'm using LightWave 3D for this uh, little mini tutorial here. And uh, that leads us right into today's sponsor, LightWave 3D. LightWave 3D has been a well-known name in the 3D industry for over 35 years. I myself have been using it professionally and personally for over 20 years. It has been used in countless movies including Jurassic Park and Titanic, TV shows like Battlestar Galactica of Reboot and Firefly, and video games as well. It's actually really huge in Japan for anime productions. Recently it has been acquired by Andrew Bishop and his team going by the name Lightwave Digital. This is a group of Lightwave users who are really looking to push it forward into the future. Check the link in the description to see how Lightwave 3D can help with your 3D printing and other productions. Teddy bears all printed, and but uh, before I did those, I modeled this little uh, piece here, a <laughs> little shape, just as a test object, just to see how uh, the you know, filament would work uh, with uh, different settings figuring out what the right temperature should be and such. So yeah, I did a bunch of those. And finally I came up with this one, was my best one. So that was, uh, I used a 235 uh, temperature for the nozzle, 60 for the bed, and all of these are 10% uh, gyroid infill and three walls and uh, four walls on the top. Okay, so that's what I used for my first teddy bear. And it did come out very stringy, but uh, it is fairly squishy. There's a, it's pretty dense, uh, but it was very stringy. And there was a, a support that went between his feet and up to his nose. And between the support and his body was a lot of strings. And if you can see, that created a kind of a mess in here. And I even tried to uh, burn away some of the strings with a lighter and ended up scorching him. So that was a bad idea. So we're not, we didn't do that anymore. Uh, yeah, but he came out pretty good. So then I moved on to the next one. And this one I did everything the same except for instead of 10% infill, I used 5%. And this is a lot squishier. I'm not sure if you can really tell, but you know, I can squish his head all the way down and then it pops back out. But yeah, that one worked out really well. So it was interesting tests. Then finally, I went on with um, the black and I decided to go with lightning infill which means there's practically nothing inside so he is now really squishy uh, the problem is uh, since there's no infill there's nothing holding the bottom together and when I was taking the supports off and the brim he started to rip apart so I don't know if you can see in there and in there he was, the whole bottom was starting to rip off. So, now we know we should use infill. <laughs> Lightning infill is not the best for TPU. But it came out really nice. It's pretty smooth. So with the Polymaker, I decided to go back to uh, what I was doing before, except instead of three walls, I just did two. And I think it... It came out pretty good, but if you can see, there's a lot of under extrusion, under extrusion uh, especially in his back. You can see all the little missing gaps. So what I decided to do was lower the speed from 100 millimeters per second down to 50 millimeters per second. And then we got this one. And this one is pretty much perfect. Maybe a little bit of string there that I didn't fix, but otherwise he came out pretty good. Yep. And he's, you know, a little bit squishy, 
just like the first one, the red one, but not too bad. Uh, the one thing that looks weird is there's a, a line above his eye on all of them, and I finally figured out that was just a seam from the slicer, so it had nothing to do with the uh, the filament or anything. Okay, so that's just a look at how the Ender 3 V3 does with TPU. It came out really good. Yep. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask, and I'll try to answer them. Uh, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.